Hey guys, One Punch HD here today to do a review for Tokyo Ghoul Chapter 60 entitled Threads of Blood. We start off this chapter seeing Kaneki, who is still playing the role of Heisei Sasaki, doing an interview with Takatsuki Sen's editor. And this guy seems to be pretty uncooperative. He doesn't really want to answer any of Kaneki's questions. He's very fidgety at the beginning of the chapter before Kaneki even shows up. And this pretty much shows that this guy has something to hide. He looks like a pretty shady guy. And I don't think that he's going to be giving up any information very easily. He probably knows the truth about Eto, at least on some level. And he's probably also aware of what she's capable of and how psychotic she is and he probably knows that this means that if he gives her up he will end up dead by her hands so he's probably conflicted and trying to decide whether he should tell everything he knows to CCG and take his chances with Edo getting him or remain silent and take his chances with CCG ultimately executing him for being a harbor of ghouls. Kaneki gets pretty irritated at the fact that the editor refuses to reveal any information about Edo. He refuses to reveal her real name. He refuses to reveal the location that he's at. He's being very cagey in responding to this question. He also refuses to reveal the fact that he probably knows that she's a ghoul. Kaneki tells him that there is a death penalty associated with harboring a ghoul. So this guy basically better assume that he isn't ever proven to know the truth about Edo or it's going to end pretty badly for him. We then switch over to Furata who is working with Kaneki and we don't really know why he's working with Kaneki yet. We know that Furata is not the kind of guy that you can trust. He's probably working with Clown. We saw what he did in the Tsukiyama investigation when he killed the investigators and then lied about it. I'm assuming that Kaneki knows the truth about Furata. I'm not sure if Furata knows the truth about Kaneki and the fact that he has regained all of his memories and probably knows everything that's going on. This is going to be one of the most fascinating relationships to watch play out in the next couple chapters, next year or so even, to see what Kaneki's true intentions are, what he's actually trying to get, and how Furata plays into this whole thing. The next section of the chapter switches over to a meeting between the special class investigators for CCG. Um, pretty much all of the special investigators that we've seen in the past are in the room. We have Itsuki, Marude, Kyoko Ara, Shinmei, Haizaki, Mugen Takanamuro, Kuri Uri, Kosuke Hoji, of course our good friend Juzo Suzia, and Haize Sasaki. So we get a big info dump on this page and basically it goes through a lot of the backstory and random information about these special investigators that will probably be important later on. But I think that Ishida doesn't really want to spend a lot of time developing backstories for a lot of these characters. So he's just going to dump this backstory on us in this chapter to kind of set them up for characters that are going to be important later on in the story. This chapter includes an interaction between Matsuri Washu and Kaneki. You can tell that Washu does not like Kaneki and they have a little back and forth where Kaneki basically tries to say that He's just here to cover for Arima because Arima is too busy and he wants to deliver his report. And Matsuri is basically having none of it. He just tells Kaneki to stop giving him his creepy smile, hurry up, give him his report and get out of his face because he doesn't like him. Kaneki begins to talk about the progress that the S3 squad is having on trying to bring down Algiri Tree. And he says that there are two critical points to making this task come to fruition. The first task is to take down the One-Eyed King, and the second task is striking at the stronghold of Algiri Tree to bring down their numbers. 
He says that his crew is working on doing task one, bringing down the One-Eyed King already, and that the person who is the One-Eyed King is the person of influence. So he wants this to be kept on the down low and not reveal any information. This is pretty sketchy because we know that Kaneki's already lying to CCG. He already knows who Eto is. He knows she's the One-Eyed King. He knows she's Takatsuki-sen. But he's playing his games. He's continuing to lie to CCG. He's continuing to do things with Furetto that we don't know. He's continuing to hunt Eto on his own. So we don't really know where that's going to lead. But that's probably going to be one of the major plot points in the next arc that's coming up. We also end up getting a big info dump on the current remaining members of Algiri, and through this we find out that Eto is still unknown to the CCG in terms of her abilities and who she is, and then we get a standard rundown of the usual characters that are remaining. We also see that Ayato is still on the wanted list as Rabbit SS. We also get a little funny aside where Matsuri is trying to spin the Tsukiyama Rosewald investigation as a success that he can take credit for, basically. But he is pretty immediately shot down and told to know his role, shut his mouth, and accept the fact that he doesn't get to decide successes or failures. The investigation, though it probably will ultimately turn out to be a positive for humans, had a lot of negatives, and he doesn't really get to decide whether it's a success or a failure. The final part of the chapter lets us see the group that is investigating Rue Island, which Kaneki reveals is the island which is alleged to be the stronghold of Algiri Tree. They have sent out Hachikawa Squad, who is the guy that has the creepy thing over his face, to investigate the island. And we meet his current squad, we get a little bit of background on that. But the big part about this section is that we find out that Mutsuki has actually joined his squad and Mutsuki is on the island at the moment and has a kind of a cool and mature look about him. The final panel of the chapter shows us who I think is Torso and Torso is basically calling out Toru. So Torso still has a thing for Mutsuki and Toro is probably on this island since this island is Algiri's stronghold and there will likely be a very awkward interaction between the two at some point during the next couple chapters and this interaction will probably lead to Mutsuki being tortured in a way similar to how Kaneki was tortured back in part one by Jason. Mutsuki doesn't have a very good looking outlook at this point but he does look like he's fixed the fear that he had going into the past arcs and is ready to get serious and start doing some damage. Also he traded his lame looking white eye patch for a cool looking black eye patch. So hopefully we get more from Mutsuki. Hopefully we find out what Kaneki is planning with Furata, why he's lying to everybody, what's actually going on in his head since we haven't been getting any interior dialogue from him lately. We also need to find out what Eto's up to and where she's on the run to hiding. And we'll find out more about all these different special class investigators. It looks like we're moving up from the ranks of the lower investigators to now we're focusing mainly on the highest end special class investigators. So it should be a pretty cool arc coming up. And that's all for this time. So I'll see you guys next time. Take care.